What's going on people, Mike C-Town here. This is my first uh, vinyl update video after officially finishing my A through Z uh, videos. And now I'm gonna show you records that I purchased while filming the A through Z vids. Uh, let's get started. First record I'm gonna show you, this is A Pagoda Crush. This is a cool record. I really just picked this up randomly when I was at my favorite record store, Criminal Records. Um, it's kind of like a uh, post-punk with some cold wave elements. Oh, mix something like New Order with The Cure mixed with, um, I don't know, there's another band that they really remind me of, but I can't place it right now. Um, kind of like that band Chameleons a little bit, I think, maybe. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of their older stuff, but I think this record is actually fantastic. Next record I'm going to show you, this is... Acrid 86th. Um, Acrid was one of the most underrated bands of um, of my era of hardcore. They're an old Canadian hardcore band, more on the side of like really heavy power violence. Um, they featured uh, Kyle from Grade, if you ever liked that band Grade. They also featured one of the raddest girls in the world. Her name was Alex. She played bass. Oh my damn. Girls in hardcore were few and far between. So seeing seeing a hot girl, or even like a semi-hot girl, playing bass in like a metal hardcore band was like fucking seeing a unicorn shitting diamonds onto a cupcake. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just incredible. All that to be said, you know, they were really good, grindy, power violence-y um, hardcore band. If you like Acme, that band Acme that I also showed one of their records in my um, old vinyl vid. If you like Acme, you'll love Acrid. Like, this band is rad. Um, this particular record is on this nice clear vinyl. I honestly don't know. Um, oh, and it's also Straight Edge. I've got Straight Edge. Um, I don't know how rare this record is. Um, you could probably get it for a pretty decent price um, if you looked around hard enough. But if you like all that kind of like old scramsy stuff, um, grindy stuff, power violence stuff, Charles Bronson, Spaz, uh, you know, any of that stuff, then I think you should definitely give Acrid a shot because they were one of the better bands doing this style. They just didn't get um, that huge, I don't think. Next record I'm going to show you, this is Ant Banks. Big thanks. Um... Man, look, if you don't know who Ant Banks is, you put this record on and there's absolutely no question where this guy is from. This record screams West Coast. Um, he doesn't actually rhyme on this record. This is just a whole bunch of stuff that he produced and he got like his favorite rapper friends to, to spit on it. So you have people like uh, Too Short, Ice Cube, E-40, Mac-10, King T, Spice One. You got Tupac, MC Breed. Like this is this is a really cool record. He had like the illest production back then. Like why his name is not mentioned more is just crazy, especially um um like in the likes of like West Coast producers. It's just weird to me. But like anyway, I found this at a thrift store. You can't really tell in the camera, but it's a little banged up. Um, but all the vinyl's clean. What's funny about this record is there's actually two copies of each record it's a double lp but it's two copies of each record i'm not going to give you the the sleeve of course but if anybody just wants the vinyl to this record um hit me up and we can work out some kind of trade you know if you've got some bullshit that you don't want that i may be interested in hey man hey brother's gonna work it out i right, brother's gonna work it out ant banks if you don't know now you know Next record I'm going to show you, this is Anthony and the Johnsons, uh, Cut the World. This is a majority um, live record, but it also has the track um, Cut the World on it. Listen, Anthony has been hit or miss for me um, since I am a bird now. You know, Crying Light was fantastic. Um, some songs were great, but some songs weren't that awesome. Uh, Swan Lights was good. Um, but again, not all of it was awesome. I'll say this though, Cut the World is one of the best songs that I've heard from him since his debut record. When will I turn, cut the world. 
So I'm really interested to hear what he does um, after this. The live songs on this are absolutely incredible. You may listen to them and be like, oh, it's overdubbed. And I mean, maybe it is, and I just don't know it, but I've seen him live and his voice and performance live is amazing. One of the most emotional concerts I've ever seen in my entire life. Like when he played, the entire place was absolutely silent and just mesmerized by this man. Even when he was just talking, but when he was performing, it was like, I mean, it's gonna sound cheesy, but it was like you were witnessing something extremely special, like an angel jerking off. Like, would you really be talking if you just went somewhere and an angel was jerking off? You would just sit there and be like, wow. But yeah, this is a really nice layout. You got the front cover, you got the back cover, and the inside, which is really cool. You have that big weird symbol, and you have that really awesome picture of Antony. If you like Antony and you saw this somewhere and you're just like, oh, it's live, who cares? No, seriously, you need to buy this because it's amazing. It's seriously, it's amazing. Next record I'm going to show you, this is Archon and Faustus Filth Catalyst. Um, if you don't know who this band is, they are one of the best black and death metal bands out there. You like Behemoth, I feel like you would really love this record. You know, great riffs, great vocals, whole lot of Satan. Like, it doesn't really get much better than that when it comes to metal. This is actually limited to 500 copies. Um, so I don't know, actually, if you could run out and buy this. I don't know. Um, you know, a lot of times things are, are limited, but they're still pretty easy to find. I don't know if that's the case for this record. I don't know if it's limited and you can't find it for less than 80 bucks or if it's limited and you can find it for fucking six on Discogs. I don't know if you can really see this or not but this fucking guy has put like a whole bunch of needles through his arm and a huge one through his tongue so listen man if a motherfucker's willing to do that for a fucking picture think about what kind of goddamn metal he's gonna write some tight shit that's what kind tight shit heavy shit tight metal satan dig it listen love it next record i'm gonna show you this is Ashbor, this is their demo LP. Um, Ashbor is a fantastic, atmospheric, drony black metal band. I don't remember where they're from though. Something is yelling Germany, but I could be completely wrong. Um, if I am, sorry. But anyway, this record's awesome. Great playing, great atmosphere to this, um, great textures. Uh, this is limited to a thousand copies, but I'm pretty sure you can still get this. I don't think it's like, I don't think it's super rare. Actually, you know what? I take that back. They're not German. They're they're from California. I was totally off. Um, it's pretty much just like a, a fold out cardboard thing that um, has this really interesting picture inside. But um, but yeah, if you're a fan of like um, atmospheric black metal or like that almost atmospheric, post-rock-ish black metal. You know, if you like that band, Alter of Plagues, this band is better. I don't really care for Alter of Plagues too much. No shots, no disrespect. Um, they're just not really my thing. But um, but if you're into that type of black metal, I think you should give um, Ashbore a chance. Uh, and talking about Ashbore, the next one I'm gonna show you, this is Ashbore Bloodlands. Um, this is uh, another fantastic piece of atmospheric black metal. Um, I don't know what this is limited. Oh, this is limited to a thousand copies as well, but I'm pretty sure you can still get this too. I don't think it's super rare. Um, similar to their demo, but the songs are a little bit more fleshed out than the demo. This is actually more noisy to me in a good way, you know, more noisy soundscape-ish than their demo. It, it almost like they were coming more um, comfortable and they were getting more into their sound. And this record came out really, really well. Next record I'm gonna show you, this is Ash Pool, for which he plies the lash, is what this is called. Um, this is one of the many bands featuring Dominic Farrow, who um, also does Purient. Um, he was in M. Doth Rear. He was also part of Cold Cave for a while. Um, this is black metal. Um, some of the songs are really good, some of the songs are just okay. Like the really raw black metal-ish songs are, are awesome, right? But then there's other songs on here that have like this weird thrash metal feel 
that I just I, I'm just not feeling. It's almost like he wasn't quite made up on the sound that he wanted to go with, you know. Or or maybe he just wanted to add a whole lot of different elements. I don't know because I've never talked to the man. He's a pretty weird dude, man. Um, he used to own this this record store in New York. It was like a black metal and noise record store and a good friend of mine used to know him and he would tell me this story actually you know what I probably shouldn't tell that story but either way I'll just say that he was a pretty pretty weird dude and the stories that my man would tell me about this guy were really really funny next record I'm gonna show you this is the Ash Borer Akitsa Split LP this came out in 2013 and almost made my best of list um, mainly for the Ashpool side because it's incredible Unlike um, their other record that I just showed you guys, this one is a lot more focused, just super raw, gross black metal um, with a lot of really interesting elements thrown into it. The Akitsa side is okay. It's a bit weird to listen to. It almost sounds like old school punk rock riffs with black metal production. Um, kind of weird, yelled, sung vocals. Um, I don't know. They're cool, but they're not super my thing. Comes in this this weird um uh, just kind of like cardboard fold out thing um but yeah hospital productions does some pretty interesting stuff from like weird noise to like really cool black metal to like um grindy almost industrial sounding records so if you haven't got around to it investigate hospital productions they're they're a pretty cool label Next record I'm going to show you, this is Atmosphere Overcast EP. Um, I actually traded this to some guy um, for an Iron Maiden Killers record. Um, I don't remember the guy's name, I'm sorry, but dude, if you're watching this, thanks a bunch uh, for making the trade very, very, very smooth. Um, I hope you're enjoying that Iron Maiden record. This came out right after their debut album, which was also called Overcast. Um, has a lot of the same songs, but also has... Um, Primer, which was not on the album, and some radio edits, you know, nothing super special, but it's still cool to have this because I love Atmosphere. This is back when Atmosphere was um, not just Slug, but it was a guy named Spawn who also rhymed in the group. But uh, this was more straightforward indie hip hop, um, just spitting rhymes and, you know, really indie underground, um, for lack of a better word, backpacker ish beats. But um, but yeah, awesome record. Next record I'm going to show you. This is Bath's Obsidian. This was one of my favorite albums from 2013, in case you didn't watch the video I did of my favorite albums of 2013. One of the most powerful, passionate, emotional albums I've heard in a really, really long time. When I heard this, the only thing I could think of um, that was sort of kind of similar as far as like lyric wise or um, delivery is uh, Perfume Genius which is another album that I absolutely love but take Perfume Genius and put them over like weird glitchy stuff like uh, almost like Bjork's Medulla or something this is an awesome record on Anacon Records um, which you guys know I'm a big fan of that label but um, but yeah I uh, don't want to talk about this too much because I talked about it quite a bit I think on that video it's a nice, thick, heavy vinyl. Um, nothing too fantastic about the sleeve. Just pretty plain. Um, but sometimes, you know, you don't really need anything super fancy for the sleeve. Uh, I think the the cover speaks to the music itself. That dark, desolate, kind of um, lonely picture on the front really goes well with the, the lyrical content and the actual overall sound of the album. So if you haven't given this record a shot, please do. You'll, um, you'll be a better person for it. Next record I'm going to show you. This is Beast Milk Climax. This was another one of my favorite um, releases of 2013. This record came out of nowhere and just seriously just slapped me in the fucking face, man. Modern Goth Rock done extremely well like picture like echo and the bunny men uh morrissey the cure joy division you know all those bands just kind of like ground up uh the cult you know sisters of mercy like um uh, uh vision thing era sisters of mercy all ground up together and just spit out on wax man that's kind of what you have here it features um 
that dude cost he was in uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name cost uh, maybe I'm mispronouncing it but whatever he was in uh, dot M's guard he was also in that that black metal band code um, but yeah I, some for some reason he decided to do a goth rock album and he did a fucking fantastic job man this record's amazing and the the, the packaging on this is great you have that that awesome cover there nothing really too big on the back um, oh, uh, let me show you this. Hot damn. White vinyl. White vinyl. What? Um, the booklet is awesome. I guess it's kind of like the CD booklet. I don't have the CD, so I don't know. But um, I don't know. How am I going to? This is awkward. Uh, yeah, it, it's got pictures, lyrics, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, it's just awesome, man. Nice, big, thick booklet with these super awesome clear pictures um but yeah this is a fantastic album man death reflects us in its mirror reaching out to us love this shit man god i love this album next record i'm gonna show you this is biters last of a dying breed this is one of my favorite bands from atlanta uh so far i've been a fan of every band these guys have been a part of from the Heart Attacks, um, which was a great uh, punk rock band that was on um, uh, Hellcat for a while, um, to Poison Arrows, which I don't think they ever did any actual uh, recordings, to Biters. They are one of the better bands that do that kind of old school punk rock and roll sound, um, you know, mixing like Paul Collins beat with like Motley Crue or something. These guys are fantastic, great musicianship, great songwriting um just an all-around awesome band you know it's amazing to me that they're not like 10 times bigger than they are this is a really really cool record um yeah it's on this nice you can't really see but it's almost like a a puke green baby shit brown color but um but yeah very 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 cool record it's got some fucking tiger coochie on the front Tiger coochie. That's the kind of coochie you don't want to fuck with, bro. And the last record that I'm going to show you guys in this edition of the vinyl shit. This is Black Funeral or Dog. Um, Black Funeral is one of my absolute favorite black metal bands. They're actually a U.S. black metal band. I remember I got into them um, by randomly buying a CD at like a, a book nook or something. And um, I was super bummed out because someone told me that they were in S. And I was like, well, fuck, man. Well, that sucks. I I'm not going to lie. I never actually got rid of the CD. I still had it. Um, I just didn't really listen to it. Um, and I used to have a fucking amazing Black Funeral um, Wampir shirt. And I sold it when I fucking heard that they were in S. And I'm kicking myself in the ass for that now because I ran across... An interview with um, Michael Ford who who does the band and he was like no we're not racist like um, he's like black metal has nothing to do with politics it's got everything to do with Satan and if you're not talking about Satan it's not black metal fuck politics Nazis no Satan yes I can totally get behind that this is not a rare record um, you can totally find this online probably for like 10 or 11 bucks but uh but yeah nothing really super cool about the layout this is the insert with uh mr michael ford hanging out with some goth bitches nice back cover apocalyptic black metal this is super raw black metal with like these really weird ambient um pieces thrown in there and these almost i don't want to say industrial sounds but i can't think of another description and I think it's mostly because of the drum machines. Like, they use drum machines kind of like the same way Iljarn does, if you listen to them, um, where it's just kind of like uh, mechanical sounding, like dirty and mechanical sounding, but it's awesome. It's awesome. But, um, but yeah, if you can find this, which I'm sure you can, you should pick this up. But um, if you've never heard Black Funeral, pick up uh, Vampire. That's it for this edition of The Vinyl Shit. Thank you for living. Thank you for loving. Thank you for being you. And I will see you guys very soon. I'd peace, bitches.